Hi, I'm Dave Ingebretson, and Leroy Hyatt and I would like to welcome you to another edition of Fly Tying, the Angler's Art. We got, uh, again, a, a nice mix of flies, I think. We're mm -hmm. going to start out with a, really a classic eastern dry fly, the red quill. Then we're going to do a pattern that I developed that's great for trout and smallmouth in lakes. It's called the double E nymph. Uh, probably represents a dragonfly, but it's got so much movement to it. And everything. soft tackle. It's a soft tackle fly. I think <coughs> you like that. And we're going to finish up with a steelhead fly called the winter candlelight spay. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to tie the red quill? Okay, red quill. I'll use a 8-aught uh, gray tying thread. This will be a bronze dun that I'll take for the tail and the wing material. We will strip a, a hackle off of this Coachman Brown. I'll strip the hackle fibers off and we'll use just the stem which will make the uh, quill body. And then the wing will be tied with uh, wood duck feather. I have a size 12 hook in the vise. I have pinched the barb on it already. I will dress this thread just at the front to start with because right here I'm going to tie the wing in. Now what I'm going to do is tie it, tie the feather in, and then I'll pull it to me till I get the right length that I'm looking for. Slide it back slightly. And you better tell them again what length you're looking for. I'm looking for about the length of the of the uh, shank of the hook. Yeah, and that works out also. Another key is about. Uh, twice the gap of the hook. Yes, yes. Get rid of that. I'll go ahead and divide those. I'm right up here in front. I'll go ahead and divide them out and uh, figure eight them. Get them as even as you can. A couple of wraps between that way. A couple more wraps between this way. And run to the rear. Get a good thread base down. Now what I've done is I've taken a spade feather which comes off of the side of this uh, bronze neck and that's where I'll get the tailing material. That is excellent stiff hackle. I'll just pull a few fibers off. Get a few more off the other side. Now in the classic eastern style uh, it's nice to tie those things as one cylinder sticking back rather than splaying them out. Oh, and, uh -huh. and one way to do that is make sure that when you make the first wrap over the tail fibers that you're over the thread base. Mm -hmm. If you go off the thread base, then you've got a little leverage system there uh, that will pull the tail fibers apart. So uh, when I'm showing people an Eastern style, I always say make sure that your first wrap to tie down is maybe one wrap of thread in from the end of the uh -huh. of the body. Well, I'm glad, glad you kept talking there because I broke my thread. Oh, I didn't even notice. All right, we'll try it again. Now if I can pick all these fibers up again that I laid down when I, I broke my I thread. I think I broke my thread once in the late 60s. And I'm surprised uh, you can remember back that oh, far. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, there isn't a fly tire alive who doesn't break thread. <laughs> or my trick is to snag it on the point of the hook. I think lot. that's what I did. I do that a lot. All right, now I've got a fairly smooth base there. Just run those butts down a little bit. And that's important when you're tying a quill body. Yes, yes. Then I have stripped the hackle fibers off of one of these uh, Coachman saddles. I'm going to tie that in by the tip. That way, as I go forward with it, the natural shape of the quill will make it get larger. Then just run it beside each other, each wrap beside the last. You can see that leaves a real nice segmented look. Segmented look and it gets larger toward the wing, just yes. like a natural. And it, you really do need that uh, smooth body yeah. to keep that taper going. Now some people soak the quills in water mm -hmm. to make them softer, but I've never found a need for that. I have never have. If I have uh, a stem that's so brittle, I take oh, it from another it neck or something. Yeah, I'll throw it away and do it another uh, time. Yeah. That's okay. beautiful. Now, I'll clip that off, and I'm going to just coat that with head cement. Yeah. 
it will give the fly durability, the body durability, but it will also very much rich in the look oh, of that. Oh, the color just completely uh, stands out. Now sometimes, uh, some people will do that now, and if it, you've got Later. a quick drying head mm -hmm. cement, other people will do it when the fly is done so mm -hmm. they don't get the hackles messed up, but uh, yeah. there you can really see the gloss. We may be in trouble the, with it, the but The color we'll gets so rich. But while we're letting that dry, let's say a word about this bronze blue dun cape. Mm -hmm. Because uh, people often have read about a bronze blue dun, I have never seen one. I've never seen They're one. They're relatively rare, and what we're talking about is a medium blue dun gray color, but it has a definite bronze sheen when you see it from the top. And I don't know if the camera can pick that up or not. A bronze blue dun is a medium blue dun usually, hackle cape, it's got a definite bronzy cast or sheen to the uh, front of the feather. And I hope the camera's picking that up so they can see both the gray and the bronze. Now if you look at the thing from behind, underneath, you'll see the fibers don't have that bronze. They're all medium blue done. And so this kind of determines how we're going to tie that hackle on the, uh, on the fly. And, and this we'll one, I tied that, the shiny yeah, side forward. Tied the shiny side forward mm -hmm. so you get the coloration to show through. But uh, as we'll probably say again, these are rare enough so that if you see one, you better buy it. I've only seen a relatively few of them. Now what I've done, I have two of those feathers tied on. I have put the shiny side to the front. And I'm going to wrap two or three turns behind the wing. Stand that wing up. Come in front of it two or three turns. Now this may be a little bit heavier hackled than some of the eastern. Well, yeah, for an eastern fly you don't want too pretty much. Sparse. Yeah. But as, as wide apart as I'm wrapping those, I think it'll be all right. Now, uh, something we discussed, Leroy and I, before is normally I put the hackles in with the dull side forward to get a little cupping to mm -hmm. the fibers to help support them. But especially this time when you want that bronze color showing through, it's important to go with the colored side forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's plenty of hackle right there for sure. That's I'll a good look. One more just to get the, a little bit of that head space covered and clip it off. Build a small head. Put a whip finish on it. Oh, that's a good looking red quill. I like the way that uh, wood duck uh, wing is. I just really like the yeah. looks of that wood duck. We don't use a lot of that in the West, no, but it's we a don't. very common material in the East. Put a drop of head and, uh, cement on it, and there's the red oh, quill. Oh, that's a fine looking fly. Use the bronze dun uh, for uh, hackle and tail material, a stripped Coachman Brown stem for the body, and the wing is wood duck. All right, we're going to tie a fly of my own creation. It's called the Double E Nymph. And I named it because of the lake I was fishing on on the Double E Ranch here in the West when I first used it. And regular watchers of the show will remember on a previous show, I happened to mention a fly that was out fishing everyone else about six to one by actual count. This is the fly we were using, the Double E Nymph. All right, I'll use an olive, six aught tying thread. This is a grizzly chickaboo that's been dyed uh, olive, a medium olive. This is a, a hen saddle that's also dyed olive. The body will be a blended green dubbing. We'll weight the fly. I have a size 6, 4X long hook in the vise. I'll dress that with the tying thread like we always do. Run that thread to the rear. And then I've got a piece of this lead wire that I'm going to wrap the whole body with it. Yeah, probably about the front two thirds is plenty. Uh, while you're doing that, I might tell them that I suspect the fish sometimes take this for a dragonfly nymph. Probably. So you want it deep and fished with short strips. But with all that soft hackle, it's got to have a lot of it, movement. You'll see when it's done, it's just a good moving fly and, <clears throat> and whether they take it for anything or not, they do take it. Now I've coated that uh, weighted material with that uh, rubber base glue. 
but I'm still going to make several trips over it with my tying thread just to be sure that it's all bound down. I usually fish this. I let it sink, and then I fish it in kind of short, maybe three-inch little strips. Yeah. <clears throat> what I have now is a piece of this chickaboo. You could use marabou for this if you wanted. I'm just going to tie it, the complete thing in, the complete feather, and then trim it off. But you can see how that tail, uh, all that soft yeah. material that's, that's is just going to right there. go. Now I have the palmered hackle, or the rib that will go on, is, is off of that grizzly uh, dyed, a hen neck, dyed olive. We'll tie it in by the tip, so I'm going to strip just that little bit like we've done on a lot of the other programs, and tie it in. And then I'll take the dubbing. And you want this body fairly plump, which of course it already it has lead under, the, so the, it will yeah, be. With the weight but uh, this is a big, juicy, meaty fly. And if you know what a dragonfly nymph looks mm -hmm. like, they're big, vicious predator Now, do you insects. always tie them this big? Do you go smaller? Do you go bigger? Uh, well, no, I, I've never tied them in any other size. Oh, really? Yeah. And as I say, you know, that's a good size for smallmouth bass. I haven't tried it on largemouth bass. The only thing I've <coughs> fished with it is trout and the smallmouth bass. And it's been a, just a, a really effective fly both places. Okay, I've got the dubbing on. I've made a little dubbing loop with it. I'm going to get my tying thread back up to the front. And I'll spin that dubbing loop. I don't want that real tight. I want that dubbing to be on a little bit on the loose, loose side. side. Now, I like the way that... Uh, <coughs> I f so often I would put the dubbing on and then I'd close the loop of thread, but you're putting your hook up in the dubbing in and the closing middle. it mm -hmm. with a double layer, and yeah, I really you like that. You do it either for way. These sh I like your way for these shaggy flies, bulky flies. Now, I did not really get well. enough dubbing on it. I'm going to have to do just a little bit more, which won't take but a minute. In fact, this one I probably won't even make a loop yeah. with. I'm yeah, just going to wrap short, it in. Yeah, that's what I do, yeah. And it's hard to judge the first one you're going to tie of yeah. how much you need to be in there. That looks great. Then I'm going to run this. I'm going to get my hackle pliers on it and run this palmer hen neck through or hen saddle through. And I've tied it in by the tip because then as I go forward with it, the hackle is going to get continually larger. Yeah. And you don't have to be too fussy because no. this stuff is just going to oh, hang out there. As soft as that is, it'll just yeah. move and you carry You can just see on. what that's going to oh, do. Oh, absolutely. And we did you get the next step done. <coughs> Bind that down. Now, I've got to say, we've been just been telling Leroy about the pattern. And he's, he's never tied it before, so he's uh, I've seen the fly. sticking that's his neck out I today. Can. He saw the fly. And, yeah. <coughs> Get all that bound down. Now, what I've done is I've taken a piece of this uh, chickaboo, and I've just trimmed the t tip of it to a point. That'll give me a tie-in point. This uh, feather gets very large real quick. If you pull a chickaboo feather <coughs> out and, and hold it up and look at it, it's got a soft center core that's in kind of a tapered V toward the tip. But then it's got a lot of long fibers sticking out to the side, and you want to get rid of those long fibers. Mm -hmm. So the whole feather is a triangular shape. He's tying it in by the tip now and wrapping it on as a collar. And then I just pull that chickaboo back. And just pull it back, yeah. As I come forward. I'll bet that would be a good damsel fly, or dragonfly. Dragonfly, oh yeah, I'm yes. sure when it's wet and it comes stroking back, but uh, uh, the one thing that you might experiment with the uh, distance you space that rib. You want the body color and shape to be coming oh. through. Well, I may have put that, that a little close matter. together. You can just see what that's going to do when it's yeah, wet. Yeah, it will. And I'll build a little head. Yeah. Or in this fly case, you could build a big head if you, you wanted to way, with this yeah. fly. You're right, this fly wouldn't have to be fussy with it at all. Oh, no. No, and I have too much of that material I, on for the I'm rib. interested, too. Maybe sometime I'll try some with bead heads. Oh, sure. Yeah, I have too much of that ribbing on. I can see that material through it, but as the fly's working through the water, it may cover it yeah. up. Yeah. Well, there's your double E nymph. It's tied with olive thread. It's tied with the chickaboo uh, olive for the tail, dubbed with green. It has a, a uh, hen saddle dyed olive.
for the rib material, and the front is a collar of olive chickaboo. Now, we've said several times dubbed with green, but it's really olive, olive a I'm medium sorry, olive. olive. It all should yep. kind of be matched mm -hmm. up. That is a good fly. All right, the last fly, the double E, uh, was new to Leroy, and this fly is going to be new to me. It's, mm -hmm. it's the winter candlelight spay fly, a steelhead fly that Leroy assures me is just the hottest thing going. Oh, I've caught several fish with it, yes. Uh, it's a variation of the winter candlelight spay from the original. I'll explain that as I go along. I'll use a fluorescent orange uh, fly tying thread, 6 aught. The wing will be polar bear. This is the variation. The original pattern called for duck or uh, goose wings. It'll have a rib and a tag of over, ovals, oval silver tinsel. The rear two-thirds of the body will be an orange floss. The front third will be uh, dubbed with the polar bear dubbing and ribbed with the yellow hackle. The front will be black marabou. I have a size one hook in the vise, a steelhead fly or hook. Now I've also tied these up as far as a, as a two aught. You can just really, it, the fly, the color combinations on them are really nice. Now with polar bear, it's hard to get. It's expensive when you can get it. Well, to and find an orange need, polar bear, that's find the an problem. Old, that's the tough part. Now, you don't want to use a whole lot of it, and I'm going to pull that dubbing out, that under fur. That's what I use for the front two-thirds of it. I'll make this as even as I can and get it all in the dubber, in the hair stacker. Drop it all on the table. And then I'm going to tie this in backwards. Now, I do this on all my steelhead flies with this kind of a wing. It lets me fold that wing over, absolutely no butts then sticking through the eye of the hook. I think it's important when you do that not to get too much winging material no, or no. you get a big bump there anyway. Yes. And that, when I started doing it after you showed it to me, uh, I found that I had to be careful not to get too much wing. All right, now I'll take just a little bit of this oval silver. The original pattern called for one wrap of oval for the tag. I like a few more than that. I'll put three or four on and just take a few wraps. Just gives it just that little bit of a sparkle there at the back. Yeah, now, for one, sake one turn wouldn't be much of a tag. No. For sake of time, I'm going to try to get by with leaving that in there, that rib. I'll take a small section of this orange floss. And this is where the rotary vise could come in handy. Now, I haven't got things set to do it, but. I'll see if I can run that around and I'll take a half hitch here. That's what I meant by set to do it. Get that out of the way. And then here comes the rear two thirds of the fly. It will be that this orange floss. And just rotate it around. Build the nice, nice part about way. rotating the vise working with floss is you're not constantly dragging your fingers down to it shred and it. snagging it. Yes. Yeah. No, I, I'm doing more and more rotary tying. And I keep finding new uses for uh -huh. it. Get that out of the way. That's, you know, that's a nice, smooth body. It is. It makes a very nice body. And I'll clip off what I don't need here. Then here comes the rib. And again, I'll just, for sake of time, rather than set it up, I'll go this way. Tie that rib off. I'm going to tie in a yellow hackle. I'm going to tie it in by the tip. Get rid of that under fur. Well, I find when you're tying in a wet hackle like that, it's better to tie it in from the tip because the natural Everything fibers gets, mm -hmm. uh, tip backwards. Yes. I'll lay that in place. And then I take this polar bear dubbing that I just clipped out. Some of it is on the long side, so I just cut it. That's all I need to do with that. 
polar bear is so nice. It's got the translucency oh, so and the gloss, and it's just a now you could use any. Stuff. You could use orange calf tail for that wing if you wanted. You could use any bright orange dubbing for this mm -hmm. body. I just. Uh, I just hate to waste any part of that polar bear, so I got to doing this with it. I don't have any colored polar bear. I've got oh, a don't lot, you? I've got a lot of good white, but I don't have any mm -hmm. colored. Well, I don't have a call for it that much. Well, for steelhead flies, steel I really yeah. like the, the pattern. Yeah. Uh, if I come up with a patch of that stuff, I'll have to try that fly because it's looking and good. I don't want that real tight, spun real tight, and just run that forward. And I got to leave room up here in front for that marabou. Mm -hmm. Then I have to fold the uh, the wing back over it too. But with the yellow and black and orange all mixed together, mm -hmm. it gives so nice. We caught fish. I caught fish on this fly uh, as early as late August last year, huh. which is just great. I yeah, mean, yeah. the fly works so well in that water. Now this, I'm going to fold it back slightly. And then just take a wrap and come forward as a rib. Well, I just broke that feather. How do you do that, Dave? I don't know how, but I've done it lots oh, of times. Yeah. <laughs> and about three wraps there is all I need. And tie it down. Oh, that's looking good. Well, I like it. The next one. The next piece is, to me, what really just sets this fly mm -hmm. off. I'll wrap back over that just a little bit to make sure I have it all down. Then I'll take just a piece of this marabou. What I'm going to come in, I'll pull the top down, get myself a little V there. And I suppose you want fairly long marabou to make it the spay fly. If you can find the good marabou, marabou's getting harder and harder to get. You know, a secret I, <clears throat> I think I mentioned that the other day to you is if you go into some of the uh, craft stores, they have feather boas. You can buy strung oh, marabou really? six feet long in the wildest colors, and huh. uh, and it's usually pretty good blood marabou. Yeah. And you'll have marabou to last you forever. For, yeah, for a lifetime. Yeah. Now again, I'm going to fold that material back as I wrap forward. May go have to go in and pick some of that out. It's wanting to bind over itself, which is really no big deal. And I don't want a whole lot of that. I don't want it all covering the uh, that body material. Mm -hmm. Clip that off. And I don't like to break those. I would much rather go in and clip it off. Mm -hmm. Wrap backward just to make sure oh, it's all bound nice. now. Now here comes that wing. Wrap forward. Get it all bound in place. I like the, the fluorescent orange thread. Yeah. It just shines in the water. And this, just like on that the last fly we just oh, tied, that nice. double E, this fly with all that moving material on it, it is so nice oh, in yeah. the water. It, uh, it's just unbelievable how the fly looks till you actually see it. Just drop well, it at your feet in there the There isn't water. so much hackle. It's kind of just a no, veil coming that's over. That's all it is. So that you see all the color through it. you can just it. see how it would work. Now, again, yeah. with all my steelhead flies with this, I would put a good coat on, let it dry, put one more on, and uh, get that good, nice, oh, shiny that, head. That's a beautiful fly. But that uh, is a beautiful fly. Why don't you fly. tell us again what you used? Winter Candlelight Spay. I used pol orange polar bear for the hair, the uh, wing. I have oval silver tinsel for the tag and rib orange floss for the rear two-thirds, the orange polar bear dubbing for the front third, palmered with yellow hackle, followed with black marabou. I really like the Oh, fly. it is a beautiful Well, this fly. show we started out with the eastern red quill, uh, the eastern red quill, and then we tied my double E nymph mm -hmm. and finished then up with your winter candlelight spay fly. So you can go after trout you can, in the east, you can go after smallmouth Dance bass wherever. anywhere, you can go after trout anywhere, and you can finally finish the season by catching a steelhead. Yeah. Well, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next week. Uh, goodbye. Dave and Leroy have produced two 100-minute videos covering basic trout fly selection and tying for the western and eastern United States. For basic western and eastern flies videos, call 1-800-883-0124 or visit our website at publictelevision.org. Cost of each video is $16.95 or get both for just $31.95 plus shipping and handling. 
You can also order the programs from this series. Each videotape includes three programs for just $22.95 plus shipping and handling. To order, call 1-800-883-0124 or visit us at our website, publictelevision.org. For more information on this series, please visit our website, publictelevision.org.